Hey there friends, this is Jerry Fleming with Sarah Davina. I am uh, alone right now unfortunately, my uh, compadre had to uh, leave us for just a moment. I hope you uh, enjoy the video I'm going to be making on our own. Uh, so for our 20th wine, uh, we actually try to make a uh, special occasion. Every 10th we do a live tasting, so we know that, or that you know, I'm completely doing this honestly and without any, uh, what is it, preconceived notions of how it should taste. So here we go. This is our first champagne too, to celebrate our 20th one. So it's Castel, Castel de Ordal. I'm not sure on the year of production or anything like this. And actually it's a very special bottle, even though it probably isn't the best bottle. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Clearly it's pretty empty. Um, it was actually a gift from my host family. Uh, I came back to visit them in Santander and it was wonderful to see them. She was so excited and I honestly, I think I had a couple tears come down. She fed me some food and gave me a bottle of wine and she actually loves beer so she gave me a couple beers as well. It was, it was wonderful uh, to reunite and uh, see them again. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Fina, Juan, and Rocio, um, my host family. And as always, I have to tell you, please follow uh, on my Facebook and Instagram at Sarah Davino. Um, so let's get right into the tasting now. So this is the last glass of my champagne or my brut. This actually isn't a uh, champagne. Champagne comes from the Champagne region of France. To be called that, you have to have the specific grapes from that region. Um, so, on to the tasting profile. It is obviously a sparkling white wine since I mistaked it for a um, champagne. Um, it is pretty sweet. Um, it's like a hangover in a cup almost. I, I like to check to see if there's any bubbles, or I mean uh, sugar inside of this as well, as always. With the sparkling, it's kind of hard to uh, differentiate the legs and everything because the carbonization makes it hard for the um, sugar to stick to the edges. So it can be obviously a little bit uh, iffy whether or not you can uh, distinguish how much sugar or how sweet it is uh, for your wine. So there's only one you guys smell it. And you might notice that my mouth is actually open sometimes when I'm uh, smelling these wines. Uh, it creates a uh, kind of a uh, special chamber in your mouth and uh, it allows more air to flow through your taste buds and like kind of uh, like ba just barely gently uh, rub against the taste buds in your mouth and go through your olfactory a little bit cleaner too. You have a more of a uh, have, like good chamber way. So I forgot to say uh, for the taste uh, for the smell I definitely, definitely picking up a uh, crisp apple. A uh, very, it's a very sweet apple, like a candied apple almost. Oh. Also, I believe I'm picking up. Uh, oh, is it a uh, a bit of raspberry? I would say it's pretty uh, noticeable in here. Uh, it's very sweet, like almost like a sour uh, raspberry or sour apple taste. I might be getting this mixed up but that's exactly what I'm picking up from uh, my wine right here. For the taste, I would definitely have to say it's, it's very mellow, very mellow. Um, it's definitely easy to drink. Um, like most champagnes, it's just like bubbly. It's not as bubbly as I'd like for a champagne to be, but it's definitely good enough. I really thoroughly enjoy this actually. It's, Obviously, I enjoyed it quite enough. It's pretty empty in here. Oh, and uh, yeah, I think I don't have a lot to say on this one, unfortunately. This is my first champagne that we're tasting on Serra de Vino, uh, so it's, uh, I'm very novice at this. I'm not usually a big champagne drinker myself, so unfortunately, I only have a few, uh, you know, cheap champagnes to go off of when I was uh, in the United States. So. For this, I would definitely, compared to other champagnes I've had, I mean, I've had Andre's and I uh, can't remember, there's a, another really cheap one that I've had, uh, but it's definitely not the highest quality. It's like right around the same lines as uh, an Andre type champagne. Uh, not extra dry, um, definitely really like uh, the extra dry one for some weird reason, when you add like a little raspberry to it, it just, 
picks it up just right. For this one, I can definitely see a uh, like a Princess Diana type drink. Uh, you add a strawberry to this, and you have just ooh, it, it'd be very good with a strawberry. So pairing with a strawberry or something a red fruit uh, like that, like maybe some chopped apples, um, and I would say yeah, some uh, apples would be perfect with this. Maybe. Maybe some banana as well. A banana would be very good with this, or a very mild cheese, like the lightest cheese you can possibly imagine. Um, probably just like a white, white cheese. No salt, no, uh, not a lot of creaminess. Like, yeah, a Swiss even might even go good with this for some weird reason. Yeah, it is very good. Mm. Oh. So uh, I think that's it for my flavor profiling. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot to talk about. My friend uh, was not able to make it here uh, today. He will be back, though, very soon uh, for our San Diego adventures. Um, so this is wine number 20, and I'd like to say thank you to, for watching, if you're watching, and please follow and let me know how I'm doing, or if you have any wine suggestions for me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Yeah,